when the master walks by. Sin is defeated. Healing can come through faith in the sun. Simple lives can be changed through the power in Jesus' name. Reach out. be in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen. It's good to see everybody. Let's all grab our hymn books. If you're able, would you stand with me and open to page number nine, all the way at the front, page number nine. Sing this from your heart. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice. Sing through that one more time. 
I love you, Lord, and I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul. Rejoice, take joy, my King. Lord. Page 46, page number 46, crown him with many crowns. We'll sing that first, second, and the last. Crown him with many crowns, the Lamb upon his throne. Heart to how the heavenly anthems round. number 67 in your hymn book 67 brethren we've met to worship 67 brethren we have met to worship and adore the Lord our God will you pray with all your power while we try to this morning to worship. Amen. That's why I'm here. 
and uh, man, we had a great time in Sunday school. Uh, we didn't get to all of our notes because the men like to talk a little bit, and uh, but it was good. It was good. Uh, we had a good time with it, and so I appreciate our Sunday school class, and uh, it was good. If you didn't come out for Sunday school this morning, we start Sunday school each Sunday. Uh, we say 10 o'clock, but if you want to get a jump start on the vittles, a uh, few minutes early, and a few minutes early because the pigs in the blanket were gone uh, towards the end of class. So, uh, But come out and join us. you have a good time. Let's pray. Ask the Lord's blessing on the service. Brother Austin, would you lift us up to the Lord in prayer? Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Just a couple of announcements here. And uh, man, I forgot one check. That's okay. We're going to recognize them anyway. Uh, of course, she's up in the uh, in nursery. Brother Jody and Miss Deanne had a wedding anniversary. And uh, amen. And so, Brother Jody, where'd you meet Miss Deanne at? Yeah. In high school. Okay. Amen. All right. High school. So that was a few years back. How long have y'all known each other? Amen. Where's the wife at when you need her? So she's upstairs, and uh, but we've got to check. How, what would you say, brother? All right. Seven. Okay, amen. And uh, they are happily married and serving the Lord together. Uh, and I tell you what, uh, Brother Jody's become a close friend, and uh, him and Miss Deanne just doing a wonderful job, you know, with their kids and just serving the Lord. But... Uh, Brother Jody walked in this church, and, uh, and, and, I, and just being real and honest with you, I see a lot of people walk in this church. Uh, Brother Jody came in, and, and he wouldn't mind me sharing this, but he had dreadlocks down below his waistline. And Now, if you, if you didn't see Brother Jody before that, you wouldn't, might not recognize him. But he walked in, and I thought, okay, who's this cat that's come in for church? And he had a Bible in his hand. Well, long story short, the Mills had witnessed to him, I think at the Cricket cell phone store, they saw him reading his Bible, studying his Bible. And uh, he had gotten saved and was reading his Bible. And they said, hey, will we go to Grace Baptist? That's why you should carry tracks with you. Amen? Amen. Think about it. Invite somebody. And uh, we go to Grace Baptist. And they invited Jody out. Well, Jody and Deanne came. And then we, Deanne and then walk in and come to find out, okay, this is the same Deanne that was a flower girl in mine and Miss Opal's wedding many moons ago. And uh, I, I would not have recognized her, obviously, because she was just a little... We just needed somebody to throw flower petals out, you know. But uh, anyway, so uh, they, he came and then, man, just started growing in the Lord and called me one day and said, Brother Timmy said, do I need to get a haircut? And I said, Brother, I said, I've never told you that since you've been here. I said, I love you. I appreciate you. Uh, I said, but if I've got to answer biblically, you need a haircut. He said, well, I was just... He said, I was just reading my Bible, and it said, it's a shame for a man to have long hair. And I said, well, you read it. I said, you know. And he said, you know a good barber? He said, preacher, I hadn't had a haircut in eight years. I was like, man. And so anyway, but uh, man, they're serving the Lord. He's helping us out in the ministry here. Uh, just thankful for his faithfulness. And, and so she can't hear us, but let's give him and Miss Deanne a happy anniversary hand. <laughs> Got a check, want to send them out to eat. Uh, and that check's on my desk, Brother Jody. I'll get it to you. So all right. Hey, birthdays. Did anybody celebrate a birthday today or in the past week? Any birthdays today or in the past? Who? Miss? All right. Yes, Miss Denise had a birthday. All right. Miss Denise, would you like Chick-fil-A or Fusaklis? Fusaklis? All right. Who else had a birthday? Miss Melissa. All right. Miss Melissa Blanco? All right. Miss Melissa, would you like Chick-fil-A or Fusaklis? Oh, okay. Very good. Chick-fil-A. All right. Anybody else have a birth? Anybody just want a Fusaklis gift card? <laughs> Wait, this isn't VBS. I can't do that in church, okay? Uh, VBS is wild around here. Uh, I know you won't. <laughs> All right, anybody else have a birthday? Okay. All right, let's give these two a birthday hand. Amen. I don't know where these came from, but whoever saved the day, thank you, because we were out of Chick-fil-A cards, so praise the Lord. All right, good deal. Hey, a couple of announcements, church. Keep the Schmutzler family in prayer to Mongolia, our missionary family of the week, doing a great job serving the Lord there, Brother Cameron and Miss Hannah on the mission field. Uh, I mentioned this last week, but these folks leave everything we know to be normal here in America, if you call this normal, and then they go across the sea 
and uh, go serve the Lord in another country. So pray for the Schmutzler family. And then also Kids Club, K-4 through 5th grade. School has started back, and so on Wednesday nights, K-4 through 5th grade are going to meet upstairs uh, here and for Kids Club at 6 p.m. while we have church in here, Bible study. So keep that in mind, K-4 through 5th grade, Kids Club upstairs, starting this Wednesday, Miss Opal. Okay, it doesn't say September, so it starts in September. Okay, amen. So first Wednesday in September. Isn't that next? Is that next Wednesday? Oh, two Wednesdays. All right, kids. So you got one more Wednesday, and then you can do Kids Club. So keep that in mind. Back to School Bash, Friday, August the 30th at 6.30 p.m., 6th through 12th grade, pizza, ice cream, candy, salad. So young people bring your favorite bag of candy, and then games and prizes. It'll be a great time. Uh, got a couple of churches we bringing young people over. Brother Kenny Ralph's also going to be preaching that evening, so we'll have a good time. It'll be, it'll be exciting. Come out for that, August the 30th at 6.30 p.m. And then Ladies Fellowship Tuesday, September the 10th, 10th at 6.30. Talk about Jesus, Ladies Fellowship. So let Miss Opal know by the 8th if you'll be attending so she can have enough tacos for y'all. So, All right, amen. And listen, Lulos, Lulos, <laughs> Lulos. Lulu's, I'm, I can't even talk right this morning, so Lulu's Snow Cone Shack is here, and uh, we're gonna, we got a snow cone for everybody here. Uh, after service is over, go out there, get you a snow cone, and enjoy it. Uh, now, I will tell you this, we're going to cover one for everybody, but if you want to upgrade, I told the lady that runs it, if you want to upgrade to like their ginormous size, you just pay the difference. So we're going to cover one for everybody, but if you want their ginormous one, We've already paid for you one, but just pay the difference, and you can have as big as one as you want. If you want just a regular one, take it, and uh, no charge. We want to be a blessing to you all. So, all right, very good. Let's see here. Uh, let's all stand and choir. Make your way to the front. We've got a special to sing. And turn around, shake a few hands, church, if you would. everybody let's find our seats and uh, listen to the choir as they sing out
Church, if you would take your hymn books and turn to page 488, Burdens Are Lifted at Calvary. Amen. 488 burdens are lifted at Calvary. 488. Jody, would you ask us an offering?
before our special music sings, uh, Miss Denise, I owe you one more. Jody, help me out. Those are only five on that one, and so we do $10 for our birthdays. And take this, these two, uh, Brother Jody. Uh, Brother Holcomb had a birthday. Let's give Brother Holcomb a birthday hand. Amen. I, oh, it was Dakota, Bryson. Bryson, both of you had one, Bryson and Brother Holcomb. I got two more. Let's see here. Actually, I'm down to Chick-fil-A, Bryson. You have to talk to your dad about that, and y'all swap. So, amen. You don't like either one. I bet you mama will take it and go get her a milkshake. So, amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Very good. Hey, y'all listen to our specials as they sing out today. Praise the Lord. I trust you love the cross. And uh, my life's different because of it. And I know your life, if you're here today, saved is different because of Calvary. Turn with me to Galatians chapter number 4. Galatians chapter number 4. If you got your good old King James Bibles with you. Galatians chapter number 4. Church, have you ever heard someone blame somebody for something and you thought to yourself, you're blaming the wrong person. Like, that person had nothing to do with it. You got the wrong person in your sights. I think many times we uh, do blame the wrong person in life, and there are even times when we should be, get this, blaming God and not man. Uh, I think sometimes we get upset with people, and there's no reason to be upset with the people. Instead, we ought to be, I don't recommend it, but you should be upset with the Lord because God is sovereign and God's in control. Uh, Paul was one who at times was on the receiving end of being blamed by others and while dealing with uh, even doctrinal error in the church, he got some folks who got very upset with him. He got blamed for preaching the truth. That's not a bad thing. Even though it wasn't his truth, it was God's truth, yet Paul agreed 
with the Lord God of heaven. It was God's word. The Judaizers had came in, book of Galatians, and they started to preach and teach that you got to keep the Mosaic law to be saved, and you got to keep the Mosaic law even for salvation. And Paul dealt with this false teaching. They had blamed Paul when in reality it was, think about it, God's the one that inspired, okay? God's the one that led the Apostle Paul to write the letter to them in the first place. I mean, think about it. And I think we, this happens to us. Sometimes maybe we get a text message. Maybe we get a phone call from somebody. We get upset with a person instead of realizing that maybe God actually led them to share that with me. Maybe God actually led them to try to help me in this situation. And so uh, the Apostle Paul dealt with this. And so this morning I want to give you a few things here from the book of Galatians. I'm going to start with a long story at the beginning and then we'll look at the scripture uh, after the story. But if you found your place, Galatians chapter 4, let's all stand out of respect of the Word of God. Let me say good to have Michael's, Brother Michael's mom and dad here this morning. Amen. I forgot to recognize them all the way from Georgia. And uh, they told me that they lived in Wiggum, Georgia at one time. You know, there's a place in Georgia called Wiggum, Georgia. And uh, so outside of Atlanta. Uh, but let's welcome Michael's mom and dad to the service. Amen. Good to have them with us today. Good to have, always good to have visitors. All right, Galatians chapter number 4. Look down at verse number 12 with me in your Bibles. Notice the word of God. Brethren, I beseech you. He said, be as I am, for I am as ye are. Ye have not injured me at all. You know how through, he said, infirmity of the flesh, I preached the gospel unto you at the first. And my temptation, which was in my flesh, ye despised not, nor rejected. He had a, I, I really believe the Apostle Paul had a health condition uh, that affected him. Uh, I think because of the text, it probably was his eyesight. And I had something to do with his eyes. And I would say, and this is just my wigamism. Uh, yeah, there's no text on this, and so please don't, you know, you can write it on the uninspired pages of your Bible, but that's it. Uh, but I really think it might have been to the point to where his eyes might have even been, it might have been gross to even watch him preach because of what was going on with his eyesight and his eyes. And because uh, they must have been in pretty bad shape for what this church, some had told him. He said, uh, nor rejected, but received me as an angel of God, even as Christ Jesus. He said, where is then the blessedness you spake of? For I bear you record that if it had been possible, you would have plucked out your own eyes and have given them to me. And then notice verse 16. He's like, man, you loved me. You liked me a lot. You even really, when I came in to preach, you treated me like as if I were Jesus Christ himself or even an angel of God. And even though I had this condition in my, with my physical body and you still received me and you didn't despise that, you let me still preach and teach and and then he said, I preached the truth to you, and you'd, uh, you even were willing to pluck your eyeballs out and give them to me. You know, I mean, you gotta, you got to really like somebody to be willing to give them an eyeball. Amen. Amen. You know, I mean, I share a lot of things in this life, but man, giving out eyes is, is a big deal. And uh, verse 16, and then look what he said. He said, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Like, what happened? All I did was tell you the truth. Father, help us this morning. We ask that you would be exalted and glorified lord help us to understand that lord a lot of times we're upset with the wrong people we shouldn't be mad at people but lord we ought to think about what you're doing and how you're working and i pray god that you would speak to hearts if there be anyone that's unsaved lord i pray that they wouldn't get mad at the messenger today but lord they would just think about the truth of your word and how that without you without christ there is no salvation and i pray god that they would get that settled if they need to today for we that know you, Lord, I pray you'd work in our hearts. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. About 15 years ago, something very unusual happened while I was here at the church. Had a very interesting phone call one night after the service. It was about 8.45. We used to meet at 7 o'clock for our evening service. And it was about 8.45. I just got done typing a letter in my office for someone in the church. And the phone began to ring. Uh, I, I had the, the phone ringer set low, I barely could even hear it ring, and then Opal spoke up and said, Tim, your phone is ringing. I answered the phone, and uh, it was a lady who asked to speak to the minister. And you never know how that's going to go when you get those kind of phone calls, right? Uh, but she wanted to ask to speak to the minister. I introduced myself, and, uh, and then she said she had some doctrinal questions that she wanted to ask me. And I said, sure, I'm here, shoot, whatever you got, you know. Uh, and then she kept saying things like, 
Are you sure you have time? Are you sure you don't need to go somewhere? Like she really wanted to get off the phone. It was kind of weird. Like, okay, lady, you called me. I'm sitting at my desk. We're done with church, and now you're asking, you want to ask me some questions? Yeah, you've got me on the phone. Ask me what you want to ask me. Well, she then opened up and told me a bit about her situation. She was Church of Christ, and her husband was an independent fundamental Baptist, or Baptist and by faith and what he believed and all. And she said that they had real difficulties in their marriage due to them not you know, believing the same thing. Now, to, to, you know, to the point that she didn't even want to mention uh, you know, each other's churches. She didn't want to name the church where her husband was going to. But she did say it was like our church, Grace Baptist. It was a Baptist church like ours. Uh, but she said they had some real difficulties. I asked her what church she attended, and uh, she said it was in Birmingham, and she didn't want to mention her church's name. Uh, long story short, with these questions that she had, I encouraged her, which I still would do today, to follow her husband's leadership uh, because that's biblical. And some would say, well, Brother Tim, what if the husband's taking the wife to the wrong church? I still would encourage a wife to follow her. If, if the husband is adamant that you need to follow me, okay, and doesn't give the wife the option to go somewhere else, I can't, I can't break and go against what God's Word says. And I have to encourage a wife to follow the leadership of her husband, pray for him. But I did tell her, I said, I told her, I said, if you're living a godly life and you're living for the Lord, I said, Paul teaches us in his word that God can use your testimony to even bring, uh, you know, if you're wrong, if you're right and your husband's wrong, uh, God can use your testimony to bring your husband around to where he needs to be. And, uh, and I explained to her how important it was to follow his fellowship. Well, she said that she could not do that. And she said the reason, and I, I, I don't know that I've ever fact-checked this. Brother Jody, you grew up in Church of Christ. You may know this or not. But she had said that she can't follow her husband because if she left the Church of Christ and went to another church, she said that she would be kicked out of the church. And that's correct. So that's what she had said on the phone that night. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, you know, and not only le- kicked out of the church, but she mentioned that she would lose her salvation like if she left the Church of Christ. So not only is she out, but she loses her salvation. Wow, so they're, they hold and are responsible for that salvation. Whew. Brother, you got that right. But hey, we, we dumped 10 people last week. I'm glad that ain't on my shoulders, you know. That's between you and God, you know. And if you ain't right, you ain't right. But it ain't me or Brother Steve or the creek, okay. Uh, anyway, so this lady, Church of Christ, and uh, she did not, uh, you know, she, she didn't want to follow her husband because of these teachings, I guess, didn't want to lose her salvation. And so I, once I realized she was Church of Christ and she really believed that doctrine of baptismal salvation or regeneration, I, I proceeded to try to win her to the Lord over the phone. I'm thinking, man, I'm going to witness to her, tell her about the Lord Jesus Christ. And the whole time she was just emotional and sobbing most of the conversation. Wouldn't stop crying, upset the whole time. After about an hour of witnessing to her that night on the phone, uh, she had did mention that she was pregnant with twins and that she had lost their first child about a year ago. Well, her in-laws, her husband's mom and dad, independent Baptists, told her that it was, quote, God's judgment on her life and that, right, I mean, I probably wouldn't recommend telling her this, but that it was God's judgment on her life and that they would never have a family until they got right spiritually. Well, listen... That may be the case, but I'm not judge or jury, okay? That's God's business. But anyway, they told her that. And so this really hurt the lady. And I told her that uh, I really felt like it was out of line for her in-laws to say that to her. But I said it could have been God's way of getting her to make the phone call that she did that night where she ended up calling me asking about all these questions. Uh, And so uh, I went on to just use her the, the former child that they had lost I went on to use that child as kind of a little bit of leverage. I hate to say leverage, but to get her to think in her mind to realize that baby souls in heaven. And if you ever want to see that child again, then you ought to get saved by the grace of God, right? And make sure you have a home in heaven. And so she was sobbing, and you know, I had preached her. I had preached to her about how her church's doctrine is unscriptural, and how it was literally, you know, sending her to a devil's hell if she believed that water could save her. Uh, she kept saying, but she kept saying this. But what if I'm right, and you Baptists are wrong? That's what she kept saying on the phone call. Well, I challenged her to just give it a try. Like just hey, you, if, we're, if you're right and we're wrong, 
then you have nothing to lose, just give it a try. And if it didn't work, if God didn't change her life, then she could go to her preacher on Sunday morning and confess this and get it right with the Church of Christ, you know. Uh, but, you know, long story short, again, she just, uh, you know, kept sobbing and saying, you know, she was upset about the whole thing, and she just, she said that wouldn't be right, and, and I just kept witnessing to this lady. Well, her phone started to die. She ended up saying, I needed to get off the phone. My phone's going dead. And uh, I told her to jot down my phone number and call me back. Well, I walked out of the sanctuary, told, or walked out of my office in the sanctuary, told Brother Jimmy about it, Miss Amy about it, Miss Opal. Uh, I think Brother Larry was there as well. And uh, told them to, you know, be praying about this lady, you know, and her salvation. Uh, well, she, en she, ended up calling, she ended up calling me back. And this is what she said, right? Uh, she kept saying this. She kept saying, this is all your fault to me. She kept saying, why did you answer the phone? Why did you answer your phone? This is all your fault. And I said, ma'am, you're blaming the wrong person. I didn't call you. You called me, you know. Not like I came to your house and knocked on your door, okay. And she kept saying that. I told her, I said, there's no accidents in God's economy that I really believe that God led her to Google independent Baptist churches. I really believe that. Holy Spirit's working in her life. She pulled up hours, called the phone number, and I answered the phone. And I kept assuring her, hey, God had this all planned out. And I, and I was trying to press her to make a decision for Jesus because I've got her on the phone, I'm talking to her, she's thinking about it. Hey, now is the time, today is the day of your salvation, right? Not this, well, we'll think about it maybe next week. A lot can happen between now and next week, okay? If you're here today and you're unsaved and the Holy Ghost of God is knocking on your heart's door, Today is the accepted time. Amen. Today, right? Not tomorrow, not next week. I would encourage you, get saved today. And then she made the comment. She said, I can't. She said, my head is just spinning. My head is spinning. I can't. And I told her it was a decision she ultimately needed to make. It was up to her. And so I challenged her to pray about it that night. And I told her that if it was truth, and she prayed about it, that God would reveal that to her. Well, that night, uh, again, I told her to search the scriptures. We would pray for her. And, and she made this comment. She said, I am scared to think about you praying for me on the phone. And I'm like, ma'am, listen, you got all this fear in your life, and you're the one that dialed the number, okay? Uh, and she said that. I'm scared to think about me praying for her. Uh, that woman was blaming the wrong person. She was upset with me when it was God who was dealing with her. Again, this is your fault. Why did you answer the phone? Well, here in our text here in Galatians chapter 4, we have a similar situation to where Paul did nothing but preach the truth, right? They let him come into the church, or they, let, they accepted the letter. They had had him in the church. He had preached there. They accepted the letter. They read the letter. And so he did nothing wrong, okay? First thing we need to make note of, look at verse number 16. You're in Galatians 4, verse 16. It says, he said, am I therefore become your enemy? And look what he said, because I tell you the truth, right? That lady on the phone, this is all your fault. Why would you answer the phone? My head is spinning. I'm scared for you to pray for me. Lady, I, all I did was tell you the truth of the Word of God. I told you what the Bible says. We need to understand this, church. Truth is from above, right? Truth is from God. Truth is not something that a bunch of men at the church sit around and think about. Well, let's see. Are we going to teach the people this? Is this what we're going to believe? No, no, no. We open the Word of God. We study the Scriptures. And we declare, thus saith the Lord. Truth is from above. It's from the Lord. Paul told them that he had been true in his doctrine and in his own witness. Church, the word used for truth here is the same word, it's very interesting, that's used for truth in John 14, 6. Listen to the verse. Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Think about it. Jesus is the truth. The Apostle Paul spoke of Jesus Christ. He was preaching the truth unto them. And then verse number 3 and verse through verse number 5, it doesn't get any clearer than that. He said, even so, we, when we were children, were in bondage under the elements of the world. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth His Son, chapter 4, verse 4. He said, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoption of sons. Verse number 5. It doesn't get any more clear than that, okay? That's the truth that Paul delivered unto them, preaching about Jesus Christ, redemption through Jesus Christ. He preached unto them the truth of the Word of God, the truth of the Lord. He was not preaching his opinion. Listen, if you're... Sometimes people will say that. Well, that's your opinion. 
Hey, if your opinion lines up with the Word of God, that's not a problem, okay? Our opinion should be based on the Word of God. Now, if your opinion differs from the Word of God, well, okay, that, that's, not, that's not smart, that's not wise. Uh, John chapter 1 and verse 14, the Bible says, And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Church, truth is from God, not man. You understand that our human wisdom and reasoning is flawed. It, it, you can't trust it, okay? And when we try to interject human wisdom with the wisdom of God, you end up with an absolute mess. It's not good. And so truth is from above. Truth is from the Lord. And when you open your Bible and study the Word of God, friend, listen, you are reading the truth of the Word of God. And, and that's not a bad thing. That's a good thing, right? We ought to study our Scripture to get more truth. And so truth about salvation, think about it. That's God's idea, not man's. Well, there's only one way to be saved, and that's through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Well, preacher, that's very narrow-minded. That's, that, was, that was God's idea long before it was Tim Wiggum's. Amen. Amen. That was God's plan long before Grace Baptist Church ever existed, friend. That was God's plan from the very beginning that salvation would be through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, think about it. Truth is from above. Hey, the truth that the church of Christ was sending that lady to a devil's hell with a ticket to heaven. Friend, listen, that, that's the truth, right? That's truth. Now, that's not, I mean, you, when you take their doctrine and base it, and trying to fact check it, you find out that it's flawed. God's word teaches us that it's only through Jesus Christ. The truth about soul winning, that's God's plan, not man's idea. The truth about being faithful to the local church, that's God's plan, not man's idea. i got stuff falling all over the place back here. Church, think about this. The truth about living a holy, separated life. That's the truth of the Word of God. You, you know, how many times do we get mad at the preacher because the preacher's trying to help us, the Sunday school teacher's trying to help you, the youth worker's trying to help the youth, and we get upset because they said something to my little baby about living right. You ought to be thankful somebody's got enough backbone to tell your kids they need to live right. Amen. And listen, the truth is God's word. It's from above. It's not from man. The truth about homosexuality and abortion and all this, you know, the transgender stuff. And listen, study your Bibles. That's from the Lord God of heaven. We don't just make it up because, well, you're just all, y'all have a, a phobia against all that stuff. No, it's not a phobia. It's the Word of God. We need to understand that it's, it's God's truth. It's God's Word. We got an election coming up. Friend, listen, I'm telling you what, I really believe this. This election is either a vote for God or a vote for the devil. Plain and simple, right? And I may lose some of you over that. I don't care. It is a vote for God or a vote for the devil. How can I cast my vote for someone that believes in, in, in killing babies? I cannot do that with a clear conscience as a child of God who believes in this book right here and believes that that, that is murder. I cannot vote for that. And if the Republican Party ever okays it, I won't vote for them either. Amen. Start our own party, the Baptist Party. <laughs> Probably wouldn't get far, but, <laughs> you know. I'm not opposed to it. <laughs> Let's try it out. <laughs> the truth from God. People say, well, you're just that because your parents are that. No, listen. I'm that because I read this book and I, I have to be careful what I vote for, all right? Truth is from God. Paul taught them that he taught them the truth, preached the truth unto them. Romans 3, 4 says this. Paul said, let God be true, but every man a liar. Every man a liar. Let God be true. What does that mean, preacher? You can trust God. You cannot trust man all the time, okay? We are flawed. Everything I told that lady on the phone that night 15 years ago was truth. Yes, it was my opinion, but it was God's truth, first of all. And, and I'm never going to apologize with agreeing with God. That's not a bad thing. But I want you to see this. Truth will always cause division. Look at verse 16 in your text, Galatians chapter 4. So Paul said, hey, I gave you the truth. I preached unto you Jesus, and then verse 16 he said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Like, truth will always cause division. 
Paul had preached to these believers the absolute truth and the truth that they were no longer under the bondage of the law. They did not have to keep the Mosaic law to maintain their salvation. The Mosaic law was not required in order to be saved. All they had to do was put their faith and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ to have a home in heaven. And so Paul is just refuting the false doctrine that had crept in. And so when he did that, now all of a sudden, am I your enemy? Like, you're opposing me? You don't want nothing to do with me now? You were willing to pluck your eyeballs out and give me one? I mean, you really loved me, but now all of a sudden I'm the bad guy because I told you the truth of the Word of God. Church, truth will always cause division. That's why you always hear this. When you're at, at family reunions, they always say, don't talk about religion and don't talk about politics, right? You've heard that before. Or when you're on the job, don't talk about religion don't talk about politics because somebody's going to get their feelings hurt. Somebody's not going to agree with you. And so truth will always cause division. Now, even among God's people, truth will cause divisions, okay? It's not just with family and friends who might not know the Lord Jesus Christ, but truth will always cause divisions. Now, how often does this happen? I would say... When, when truth is preached, we have to make a decision. Do I accept the truth or do I disagree with the truth? In verse number 16, God uses the preacher to shine the light on this teaching that had crept into the church. And so by doing that, friend, listen, it became an issue because some people in the church believed it, some didn't believe it, and so Paul's dealing with it. Hebrews 4.12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Think about it. When we hear the Scripture, you're not, yeah, Brother Tim may say it, but it's really you're hearing the word of the Lord, okay? And when you, if, you, if you get mad at, at, at the book, you know, you're really not mad at the preacher. You're mad at what the Scripture says. I mean, even we talked about... Uh, Korah this morning from the Old Testament numbers and they, they they thought they had risen up against Aaron and Moses but the Bible says that they had gathered themselves against the Lord it wasn't just it wasn't just the preacher and the assistant pastor no 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 they had gathered themselves against the Lord and so church when we hear the word of God yes there's times where it cuts there's times where it's like oh man and medicine doesn't always taste good but we need it and so truth will always cause division. Sometimes it's in families, sometimes it's on the job, but it will cause division. Mrs. Allison, the lady that called 15 years ago, she experienced this when she called that night. When she said, preacher, this is your fault. Preacher, why did you answer the phone? You shouldn't have been at church. Where else was I supposed to be, right? Uh, again, don't blame me. Blame the Lord. Don't get mad at me. Get upset with headquarters. The irony is this. The same people who love us and pray for us, think about it, sometimes are the same people that blame us. Same people that love us. Same people that pray for us. At times will be the same people that blame us. That's what the Apostle Paul dealt with. He said, now am I your enemy because I tell you the truth? Uh, I want you to see this in Matthew 10. It can even be true in our families at times. Matthew chapter 10, and this is, can be real difficult. People you don't see all this, maybe once a week or twice a week or three times a week, but people you live with, it can be tough. Matthew chapter number 10. And look down at verse number uh, 32. Matthew 10, verse 32. Truth will always cause divisions. Matthew 10, go down to verse 32. And notice your Bible. He said, Whosoever therefore shall confess me before men, him will I confess also before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I also deny before my Father which is in heaven. Verse 34. Think not that I am come to send peace on earth. Wait a minute. I thought, I thought that's what Jesus did. I thought he brings peace and makes everybody happy and love everybody and everybody gets along. No. Truth divides, okay? Notice what he said, church, verse 34. This is Jesus speaking. He said, I came not to send peace, but a what? So, well, why can't we just all get along? I mean, what about this coexist? You've seen the bumper stickers, coexist. It's got every kind of religious group on the planet listed on it. we just all supposed to get along and hold hands and, and sit around the campfire and sing Kumbaya all night. No, 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 no. That, that, that's not what the Bible teaches, okay? He said, I am, he, said, I, he said, I am not come to send peace, but a sword. Verse 35, 
He said, for I am come to set a man at variance against his father. Man, that, that sounds backwards. The daughter against her mother. The daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's foes, notice this, shall be they of his own household. Verse 37, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loveth son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Verse 38, and he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me, Jesus said. He said, he that findeth his life shall lose it. And he that loseth his life for my sake shall find it. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. Verse number 40. You can go back to Galatians. Church, here's the point. Now, obviously, Jesus doesn't want families mad at each other. Don't take that out of context, right? Don't pat yourself on the back if, you're, if, if your mom or dad's mad at you. That's not necessarily a good thing. Here's the point. If you follow Jesus Christ and you take up your cross and you study the Word of God and you not just read it, but you study it, you live it, you obey it, there's going to be some people in your life that don't agree with you, okay? You're going to have some family members that say, what, why, why do you do that? Why do you go there? Why are you part of that? Why do you give to that? Why do you support that? Why do you spend your time doing that? I mean, don't they know you got your, this is your life and you be doing your own thing? There will be people that oppose you and sometimes even of your own household. Jesus is not saying that that's a good thing. He's making it clear that when you follow him, there will be divisions. There will be divisions. It's part of it. Part of it, friend. The truth will cause division. Hey, listen. Uh, this whole mindset, this ecumenical mindset of bringing all denominations together and everybody getting around the table and talking about and discussing. I get letters in the mail from our local you know, religious groups here in Mobile and Sims, and they want everybody to come together. and they want, they want the pastor to be there and to pray and to be part of it and talk about everything. I have no desire to sit down with all those people, okay? Because at the end of the day, this is what's going to happen. Something's going to be said that is contrary to that book right there, and I'm going to open my big mouth up, Amen. and now they're no longer going to like me, okay? I won't get another letter at that point, all right? I'm not going to them, okay? It's, it's unscriptural. Ecu this ecumenical movement that is trying, it's not good. Nothing good's going to come out of it. And so truth will always cause division. I told the lady, Miss Allison, on the phone that night that there were some things, because the church that she went to, that we can disagree on, but there's some things that we can't disagree on. They don't believe in instruments. All right, is that right, Brother Jody? No instruments? No, not even a piano, right? Not even a piano. That's right. And, uh, and I told her, I said, ma'am, I, I said, we can split hairs on whether or not you've got instruments in the church, right? Uh, you know, that, that, that's not a, a major thing in my mind. I said, but we can't split, ha split hairs on soteriology, right, the study of salvation. We can't do it. And we can't split hairs on pneumatology and eschatology and these other major doctrines. I said, we, 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 can't, we, we, we can't differ on that and still have, you know, have an understanding. It doesn't work. And, uh, and so uh, just encouraged her that night, you know, to think about all these things and gave her my number. Well, I want you to see this. Truth is from the Lord. Truth will always divide. But truth has also has the power to set free. Look at John chapter 8 with me. John chapter 8, real quick, and we'll wrap it up with this. John chapter 8. Truth has the power to set us free. The irony is we feel free before salvation. We think we are. You know, I can do what I want, live my life. You know, I can make my own choices. And, yeah, the choices you're making are killing you and sending you to hell. I mean, that's, you know, not good. But we feel so independent. Feel like, man, I can just live life, right? No, listen, when you get saved, you can live life. Life begins at Calvary. Truth has the power to set us free. John chapter 8, verse 31 and verse 32. Notice your Bible. It says, Then said Jesus to those Jews which believed on him, he said, if you continue in my word, then are you my disciples indeed. And then he said this, and ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. The truth shall make you free. Church, the great news about the truth is this. It is eternal, okay? It is convicting. It will guide and lead you and I if we will simply listen and follow it. If you're here this morning unsaved and you've heard the truth, that Jesus is the only way to have a home in heaven, you have two options. You can either follow that truth, let that truth lead you, the Word of God, to salvation. Or you can say, 
Nah, you can go the way of Cain and say, I'm going to do my own thing, right? You know, I'm not going to go the blood way. I'm going to go my own way. I've got my own plans. You, you get to make a choice. But truth will lead you. It's eternal. If you'll follow it and listen to it, it has the power to set free. Yes, it hurts at times, but truth ultimately sets free. Verse 32 teaches us that in John chapter number 8. I told Allison that night on the phone, I told her, I said, deep down, I said, you know that what I'm telling you is the truth of the Word of God. Now, she didn't want to reach, she didn't want her, her husband to know she had called. She didn't want her in-laws to know she had called. She was trying to be completely anonymous, didn't want anybody to know about this, okay? And she was searching. But, but I, I really believe that the Holy Spirit was, was leading her and guiding her and working in her life. And one of my biggest concerns was that she might say no to the Holy Spirit one last time. Think about this, church. You, you, yeah, you can say no to God so many times that God says, I'm not coming back. He's only obligated to come to you one time. That's it, okay? He, he, I, I believe scripturally God obligates himself to reveal truth to us, okay? And I think he does that even by way of if you're driving down the street and you're unsaved and the Holy Spirit may say, you need to visit that church. And that was God leading you to come to this church to hear the truth of the gospel. Or maybe a soul winner knocks on your door. You read a gospel track. But think about it. The Holy Spirit knocks on your heart's door, convicts you about the need of salvation. And you say no to God. Hey, listen, sir, ma'am, teenager. He is not obligated to come back again. But because he is such a loving God and a gracious, long-suffering God, and he's not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. You know what he does? He comes back time and time again. And thank God that he does. We are thankful for that, okay? Thank the good Lord that he does. But he doesn't have to. He doesn't have to. The Bible says that the Spirit of God shall not always strive with man. And my concern was, man, if Allison doesn't get saved... Her husband's been witnessing to her. She's in a struggle. Do I go to the Church of Christ? Do I go to my or do I leave the Church of Christ and lose my salvation from being baptized and follow my husband? What do I do? She was she was in a, a really a tough place. Truth is great, and truth isn't going anywhere. But if God isn't dealing with man, then man can't respond to the truth. Listen to this, John six forty four. No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him, the Bible says. And so I believe that when she picked up that phone and dialed it, friend, listen, I believe that the Lord was working in her life. I believe that. Uh, I wonder if you're here today and you're maybe thinking about salvation, been dealing with salvation. The story with Allison, it has a, it has a good ending. I was at a birthday, we, Opal and I were at a birthday party with someone, uh, for someone, one of the teens in, in, the, in the church at the time. And the phone rang, and it was Allison's number popped up on my phone. And so I went and took the phone call. Uh, she ended up, she, 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 was, she was broken. She was, she was very humble, had a different attitude. And, uh, and, and she ended up trusting Christ as her Savior, you know. The same woman that said, why'd you answer the phone? You know, you shouldn't have been at church that night. You know, preacher, this is all your fault. The same person that was blaming me, for doing something that I was just sitting at church, right? Wasn't doing anything wrong. Ends up calling back that day, accepted the Lord as her Savior, got saved by the grace of God. And, uh, and, and, that, and that's a wonderful thing. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, I would say, be careful who you're mad at. Maybe you're upset with the wrong person. Maybe God's trying to work in and through your life. And, and even Allison admitted it. She said she knew that God was dealing with her. And, and on that phone that, that day at the birthday party, I asked her, you know, was she ready? And she said, yes, I'm ready. Uh, I asked her you know, after she got saved and all, did she call her husband and let him know? Uh, he was actually working out of state. He was in California. Uh, she was here in Alabama. And so there was a, a disconnect there of when they, where they were living at. But, and uh, she had said no, not at the time, that she wanted him and her in-laws to know that this was her decision. And it wasn't just, you know, somebody talked her into it, so to speak. But anyway, uh, friend, listen, don't blame, don't blame the preacher. Blame God. Don't get mad at the wrong people in your life. Hey, hey teenager, don't, don't be mad at mom and dad. Mom, mom and dad's trying to help you. They love you. They care about you. They're trying to lead you and guide you. And you get upset with mom and dad. You're upset with the wrong person. 
God's working through them to help give you what you need and set you up for success. Don't be mad at the wrong person. Hey, employee, don't get mad at the employer, right? Maybe God's working through the employer. Don't get mad at the preacher, the Apostle Paul. He gave them the truth of the Word of God. The Bible says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. If the Son, therefore, shall make you free, ye shall be free indeed, the Bible says. And so I wonder this morning, are you upset with somebody for the wrong reason? Maybe, maybe upset, maybe it's a friend, maybe you got a close friend, and man, you're just, you're mad at them right now. And they ain't done nothing, they've done nothing to you, right? Maybe they shared something with you, maybe they talked to you, trying to help you, and you're upset with them. You need to release them from that, and you need to think about God Almighty, who may be trying to work in and through your life. Sometimes I think we're upset with the wrong person, and uh, we don't give God, the Holy Spirit, enough credit for the work that he does in our lives church i believe that god takes an active role i think that every day listen i don't think it's an accident how your day goes every day you know why are some days better than other days why are some days just plain out miserable like sometimes it's just like man i wish i'd have never got out of bed today this is horrible okay sometimes god's working friend listen and so and sometimes it is I, I, sometimes there are satan storms sometimes it's the evil uh, in this world that comes against us but uh, sometimes it's God working and God trying to get our attention and God trying to get us to stop for a minute and think about something and you know what's so good about it he won't stop until we stop amen he'll keep knocking and keep showing up and keep allowing this and doing that until we throw in the towel and we surrender and say okay Lord you got my attention I was wondering if Allison would ever call back if she would ever get saved I mean, when you have a conversation like that, you just don't know how it's going to go. And then for her to call, God was still working in her heart and mind and led her to that place where she trusted Jesus as her Savior. And no doubt, probably, I'm sure I haven't obviously talked to her since then, but hopefully left the church Christ and was going to church with her husband now. And, uh, and what a blessing, you know. And, and probably that husband had been praying for his wife, and he's in California, and here she is Googling, calling the Grace Baptist Church of Sims, Alabama, she gets born again. He's unaware of all of this. And he's praying, Lord, work. I'm, I'm sure, I'm, I'm just imagining, praying for God to work in his wife's life. And, and then she gets saved. And man, maybe that family is a, obviously would be a whole lot better off after the wife gets saved. So anyway, what's the Lord speaking to you about today? Friend, listen, don't be mad at the wrong people in your life. Let's stand. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Maybe you're here and you say, Preacher, I've never accepted the Lord as my Savior, but I would like to do that today. Friend, if that's you, I'd like to pray for you, give you an opportunity to trust Christ as Savior. Maybe you hear the truth from the Word of God about the gospel, and you think, well, that's narrow-minded. That's not right. That's not fair. There's, there's many ways to be saved. No, I, there's only one way, and that's the blood way, and that's through Jesus Christ. There's no other way. Cain tried it another way. It didn't work. He ended up murdering his brother out of jealousy. Uh, the way of Cain is not good. That's man's way. But you know what? There is a way. It's the blood way through Jesus Christ. Maybe here today you'd say, Brother Tim, I want to trust Jesus as my Savior to make sure that I have a home in heaven. If that's you, I just want to pray for you today. Would you quietly slip your hand up till I see it? Anyone at all, real quickly, say, Preacher, pray for me. God bless you. I see that hand. Anyone else say, Brother Tim, pray for me. I want to make sure I trust Christ as Savior. Anyone else, real quickly, real quickly. Father, we love you, Lord. We thank you for Christ, our Savior. Pray for those that need to be saved, Lord. Give them the understanding, Lord, the courage to make that decision. I pray, God, that you'd work in their heart and life. And, Lord, for we that know you, sometimes we do get mad at the wrong people. And, Lord, it's not fair, but we do it. We ask you to forgive us of that. And, Lord, help us understand that you're at work in our life. And, Lord, we may look at man and blame man, but, Father, we really need to be looking to heaven and asking, what are you trying to speak to us about? And I pray, God, that you would just help us understand that. Lord, pray that you'd bless this altar call we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Piano's going to play. Let's take a moment and talk to the Lord if God spoke to your heart today. Maybe something you want to pray about. Maybe you got a situation that it just seems like, man, you're hitting one brick wall after another after another, and you're mad at the tire for being flat instead of listening to what God's trying to say. You're mad at the dog for doing this or that or your neighbor for something, and God's trying to work in your life. Hey, listen, you ought to just say, Lord, what is it? God, what do I need to change? What do I need to do? Lord, what do I need to fix? Lord, who do I need to talk to? Don't be mad at the wrong people.
Teenagers, be thankful for a parent, mom and dad, grandma, grandpa. Maybe you live with your grandparents. They love you. They care about you, trying to keep you out of trouble, trying to keep you out of jail. Don't get mad at them. Don't get mad at them. They're trying to protect you. Let's take a moment and talk to the Lord if God spoke to your heart. Amen. God bless the church. Uh, I've visited people in the hospital and they'll say, Preacher, do you think God's trying to speak to me? I don't ever answer that. I don't. I'm like, what do you think? And usually they'll, they'll just shake their head like they know. And that's between them and the Lord. I'm not, I'm not making that call. Uh, I'm not God. But if you're thinking about it, maybe he's trying to speak to you about something, you know. No, no accidents or coincidences in, in God's economy for God's people, you know. Uh, if you go outside and your tire's flat, <laughs> Lord, why? <laughs> Amen. Uh, all right, hey, listen, we got a snow cone for you outside. And uh, go outside, get you a snow cone. We got a handful of folks in here, so there might be a little bit of a wait. But you don't, you don't have to go out there yet in the heat unless you just want to. Picnic tables, playground out there if you want to go swing. And uh, take your kids' parents and, and get you a snow cone. So. All right, let's pray and we'll get you out of here. Father, we love you. Pray dismiss us in safety, Lord. Thank you for your word. Bring us back safely tonight for the 6 p.m. service, we ask in Jesus' name.